Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Physics 71. And today, our topic for discussion is unrolling without slipping. This is the second part of our um, of our uh, lecture 23 coverage. Um, last time we discussed uh, fixed axis rotation. Uh, so in that case, we've introduced to you the notion of solving problems in rigid body dynamics. So panagosapan natin don anong pinag uh, actually si Aldon palang nagdiscuss sa inyo. Um, Aldon discussed uh, the the different uh, approaches on solving problems in the in rotational dynamics. So if, for example, if the force um, is what you want, if you want to determine, for example, angular acceleration or linear acceleration, you use Newton's second law or Newton's second law for rotation. Otherwise, kung hinahanap naman ay, ay velocities or angular velocities or distances, for example, you, it's better to use energy approaches like conservation of mechanical energy. Now, um, for today, we will be discussing rolling without slipping. That is, the object is now, or the rigid body that we're considering doesn't have any fixed axis anymore. So uh, what we now have is a, uh, an axis or a center of mass that is translating also alongside with the rotation done by the with the rigid body. So meron ang dalawang motions na nangyari. Ang tanong paano natin i-analyze yung mga ganitong systems? How do we solve problems um, involving systems that are um, rolling without slipping? Okay. Um, the important thing here is the object rolls but the slipping doesn't occur. Okay? Pag-usapan natin yan as you go along, anong, pinag anong ibig sabihin when an object rolls without slipping. Okay? So again, the lecture plan. Um, last time I discussed fixed axis rotation and today I will be discussing rolling without slipping uh, um, for, um, for, for the next hour. So um, here's an outline of what I will be discussing. First, um, we explain what rolling is. And then second, we solve problems involving rolling objects. Uh, um, and... Ayun, pag-uusapan natin paano nangyari yung rolling. So, and we will solve problems in um, in rolling objects. So, yes. Okay. Sige. Now, uh, at the end of the session, you should be able to first compare translational and rotational kinetic energies of a rolling object. Remember, again, the object is now translating and rotating. Hence, there should be two terms in the kinetic energy relation. There should now be a rotational kinetic energy because the object is now is now rolling, and there should be a translational kinetic energy because of the because the center of mass is now translating. And then, second, we apply Newton's second law for rotation and conservation of energy to physical systems that involves rotation about a moving axis. Again. When an object moves, when an axis is moving, um, the object is rolling. Okay? Questions? May mga tanong ba? May mga tanong? None so far. None so far. Thank you. So, okay. Um, what, uh, how do you say if an object is rolling? An object is rolling, as I said, if um, an, when an object rotates at the same time, it's center of mass translates. So, dala, as I said, dalawang motion na yung pinag-uusapan natin dyan. The object is rotating, uh, therefore, we, will, we need to use our rotational kinetic energy, for example, and the torque of equation will also apply. At the same time, the center of mass is now translating, that is, the, the object is translating, therefore, uh, uh, meron ang gumag dumudulas na siya. Uh, hindi, mali term na dumudulas. Gumagalaw na siya. Pero gumugulong din. So yun, dalawang, dalawang, uh, dalawang motions ang nangyayari dun sa object. Okay? Now, first assumption that we will be considering, uh, kasi rolling object, uh, rolling is a complicated uh, motion. Medyo komplikadong motion yan. Um, we will assume that while the center of mass is accelerating, um, the acceleration is only due to the change in the speed of the center of mass. It's not due to the speed or to the um, motion of the object changing its direction. Hindi natin pabaguhin yung direction ng object. Kasi pag nangyari yun, medyo masaging komplikado yung analysis natin. Okay? So while the center of mass translates, uh, it's only possible uh, due to the fact that the center of mass velocity uh, is changing its speed. Speed lang ang nagbabago sa center of mass. Hindi, uh, hindi direction. Okay? Questions? So, may tanong? May tanong? So, um, wala naman? Okay, just like this cute panda here that is rolling. Oh, this is so cute. Um, the total kinetic energy now, because you have two terms, you have now the sum of the translational kinetic energy of the center of mass and the rotational kinetic energy of, uh, of the rigid body. Because again, the object is rotating relative to the center of mass. Okay, so um, an important idea here, 
uh, is that the moment of inertia is ICOM, meaning what we want to determine is the moment of inertia about the center of mass. Ibig sabihin, uh, if you have a moment of inertia that's not on the center of mass, you need to use parallel axis theorem again to determine the moment of inertia about the center of mass. Usually naman given to. Okay, and the, the, the question is, why do we need to use ICOM? Um, a second assumption in our analysis is that our, our moment of uh, the, the object has a center of act, um, has its uh, center of mass at the geometric center. Kasi nga naman, kung wala sa geometric center na, may tendency hindi yan gumulong. Okay? So, um, as a simplifying assumption, so again, first one is that um, the object doesn't change its center of mass velocity. I should say the direction of the center of mass velocity. And then the second one is that the, the rolling object has its center of mass at the geometric center of that object. Okay. Again, uh, oops, sorry. Um, the, again, Newton's second law uh, will still apply as long as the direction of the center of mass velocity doesn't change. That's our first assumption uh, when an object is rolling. Questions? May tanong ba rito? May tanong? None po. Wala. Okay, sige. So, in that case, uh, if an object rolls without slipping, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi dumudunas yung object habang gumagalaw siya. Ang tanging motion lang niya um, is uh, rolling. It's rolling, tapos nag-translate yung center of mass velocity. The following equations are true, which is, again, your non-slip conditions. The non-slip conditions will be true. So, for example, the total distance traveled by the rolling object is proportional to the angular displacement of that object. Uh, again, the total displacement of that object is, um, is equal to the angular um, displacement of that of the trolling body. Okay. And then um, further, uh, kung naalala niya yung non-slip condition sa atin last time, and that was discussed by Aldon, uh, what was done there is that the tangential velocity is uh, proportional to the angular velocity. For example, if you have a rope and then you, you pull the rope, therefore, um, if there's non-slip condition, the pulley will also rotate. And uh, what we compare there is the tangential velocity and the angular velocity. Naalala? Naalala yon? Also, the tangential acceleration and the angular acceleration. So, yun yung kinumper natin. But for an object rolling without slipping, it's not the tangential velocity that we want to compare. It's actually the center of mass velocity that we want to compare. Bakit? Kasi, um, if we look at the diagram at the bottom, at the, the second diagram, remember, rolling involves two motions, um, uh, translation and rotation. So, um, if the object just translates, just like what we did before in our... Uh, Newton's second law, ang nangyayari lang, um, all the particles that are uh, moving uh, will move at the same um, velocity as of the center of mass. So, so na yung motion nito, yung velocity na to, yun rin yung velocity na to, nito, nito, and equal sila sa velocity ng center of mass. Okay? So, ganun lang yung nangyayari. However, hindi lang naman nagtatranslate yung bola uh, or yung object. Nag-rotate din siya. Therefore, there should be a quantity, uh, a tangential velocity that's acting on the particle on the rigid body. Therefore, since umiikot yung rigid body mo, there's an angular velocity, and every point, therefore, on the on the rigid body has some tangential velocity, given by V equals R omega. Okay? So, for example, since omega here is um, into the paper, uh, we are expecting that the tangential velocity should be uh, uh, at the same direction, so for example, at v3 prime, it should be moving to the to the left, to the right, to the right hand. Uh, in v2 prime, it's moving upward. In v4 prime, the velocity is downward. And at v1 prime, which is the point of contact of the surface and the the, the, the rigid body, v1 prime is equal to just the negative of the center of mass velocity. So, ang nangyayari, therefore, if you add now the two velocities, one due to translation and the other due to rotation, what happens is that the center of the velocity at the center of uh, at the center of mass is just VCM. However, this the velocity at the point of contact vanishes. Walang, um, so therefore it appears that at every given point, the contact point between the, the rigid body and the surface is static. Okay, static yan. Hindi gumagalaw. So, anong big sabihin nun? So, if you take a snapshot, so snapshots of, of, the, of a rotating body, of a rolling body, every point, yung, yung point of contact nila, static, hindi gumagalaw. It just happens na um, kapag nag-roll yung object, 
nagbabago yung point of contact. Therefore, iba-iba yung nagiging point of contact dun sa throughout the motion of that object. Pero at each point wherein uh, it's at the contact with the surface, it should be at rest. Okay? Questions? Questions? Now, the uh, the magnitude of the center of mass velocity is the same as the as the center of mass velocity here, and hence we expect that is the VCOM here uh, is the one that's that's related to uh, to omega instead of your angular of your um, typical um, tangential velocity. Same thing with the center the acceleration. What we want here is the center of mass acceleration and not the tangential acceleration. Okay, clear ba tayo don? Clear ba tayo don? Yes. Ay, tanong? Okay. Now, as a consequence, kung napapansin ninyo, okay, okay, balik tayo dun ngayon sa static, sa um, Newton second law natin before. Okay, let's say may, meron kang incline, tapos may box ka. Anong nangyayari sa box? So, Siyempre, babagsak, di ba? But what is the, what happens between the box and the, and the incline? Anong nangyayari? Di ba dumudulas lang sila? Sliding yan. The box slides down, di ba? It's sliding down. Okay? Therefore, assuming na may friction dyan, hindi yan hihinto. Even though na may friction, it's still kinetic friction. It's a sliding friction. Okay? However, when an object rotates, remember, itong point of contact at rest. Therefore, hindi kinetic friction ang mag act sa isang rolling object. In fact, it should be static friction. Static friction will act on, on the object. Okay? Do not forget this. Hindi kinetic friction ang mag-aak. Therefore, when you use your equations, do not use immediately your mu kn or mu sn. Kasi remember, ang static friction, hindi siya lagging proportional sa normal force. It's, it's, the, it's just the maximum static friction that is proportional to the normal force. And he, hence, dito, you can use um, your Newton second law, for example, to solve for the frictional force without invoking that fact about the normal force, about its relation with the normal force. Okay? Malinaw ba yun? Clear ba tayo dito? Questions? May tanong? Walang tanong dito? Again, it is static friction that acts on a rolling body. Hindi kinetic friction. At hindi dapat frictionless yan. Otherwise, kung frictionless yan, it will slide. The rolling object will, the object will not roll, it will only slide. Okay? Questions? Questions? May tanong? Wala? Wala, okay. 